Hey, Ken, I guess just how would you evaluate Alex's last couple of weeks and specifically what he did against Detroit and just how he seems to be progressing in your mind? Well, we're real excited about his progress. Uh, you know, he came off the bench twice, so he gets thrown in there a little bit. You can see how his, his reactions get better and better as time goes, and then having a whole full week of practice last week uh, really helped things. So we're real excited about going into this week and where he's at, and, uh, you know, he's continuing to make progress physically. Ron really likes the way he spreads the ball around. Why do you think, is that just Alex the player? Is it the system? Why do you think Alex uh, does such a good job in that aspect? Well, he does it exactly how we ask him to do it. And then he, he does it with decisiveness. Everything's thought out. Every look's thought out. When I'm going to this guy and why. So that when it happens on game day, it's natural, it's quick, it's decisive. And it goes where we said it was supposed to go. And uh, you love that as a coach. The things that you talk about during the week actually happen on game day. That's a huge positive, And uh, it makes you want to give more and more. Ben? We'll go to John Pine next. John's not on. Go ahead, Nikki. Hi, right. Ken. Um, what has it been like for you to, you know, work with three very different quarterbacks at different stages in their careers, different strengths? Um, what type of adjustment does that take for you as a coach? Well, there, there's certain things that are, this is how we do it, and we're all going to do it like this. And then there's certain things like your delivery that's tailored to the guy, knowing his strengths and weaknesses, what to emphasize with that particular guy different than another guy. And that was part of the process in the spring as best we can to get to know the guy's style of personality, build bridges, relationships. So there's a bonds that you can fall back on here uh, as you go through the season and things get a little tougher. And so uh, we all spend a lot of time uh, building those bridges with the guys so we can have good communication now and know what kind of communication works with each guy. John, go ahead. Hey, thanks, Ken. Um, what, with, with, can you, what are you doing with Dwayne now to maybe help that development? What, you know, behind the scenes, what is he doing? What are you guys doing with him? Well, a couple of different things. We're, we're meeting extra. That's for sure. We've got Steven as a young guy. So we have some young guys in the building that need a little, little TLC that way. And that's exactly what they're getting. They're responding well to that. It's not something that just flashes overnight. Hey, we're here. You know, it's a, it's a very gradual understanding of the offense and it gets a little bit better each week. And then you get a little bit more comfortable with the reads as you go forward and the speed of your processing of the looks. And that's what we're looking for. We're trying to accelerate that, uh, that learning curve. Can you see a difference in that? And are there things that, how do you do, how do you accelerate that? Or do you take them on the field afterwards? Is it more meeting rooms? What, what is that like? Well, we do extra meeting, meeting time, film time. We get a little head start on the install with the young guys. Uh, and then back there, we're constantly talking while Alex is, is up and going. We're constantly talking about the play that happened, uh, what he saw, what, what the guys back there saw, and, and they're actually playing the play while Alex is playing the play, going through the steps, the reads, the, all that as if they were in. Let's go Rhiannon, Matt, and then Sam. Thank you, and good to see you again. Rhiannon Walker with The Athletic. Um, a few weeks ago, Ron was saying that part of what they're trying to evaluate right now as the season ends is whether this team has a franchise quarterback. You've worked with a number of guys that have taken over as franchise quarterbacks. In your opinion, what, how do you determine if there's a franchise quarterback and like, what are the hallmarks of a guy like that? Well, they win. I mean, first and foremost, those guys win. Uh, they, they end up making the guys around them better. They process a, every day as if it's game day. They're, they're live, they're on, there's a sense of urgency. And the way they play infects the other guys in a positive way. And uh, so we're constantly watching, not necessarily when a guy has a rep when he doesn't have a rep. You know, we're always evaluating how a guy uh, takes the information, processes it, and then has a chance to spit it back to you or show you by the play. And then the drill work, there's a lot of things involved in that, and we're going through that process right now. Hey, uh, Ron was saying yesterday that he, like, with the meetings going virtual, you guys are doing kind of something special for the quarterbacks. Do you know what he meant by that, or what are you guys kind of doing now that the meetings are virtual and you can't be in person? 
Well, they're able to come into the uh, the building early, so we're we're working with them earlier and uh, getting a head start on each day's install. And then, do you find it like how is it different preparing for an actual game week over Zoom rather than you know they're going over like the installs of a playbook and the screen that sort of thing? Well, we're actually able to be uh, in person with the quarterbacks. So we're doing that, so we're not doing. Yeah, so it, it, it matters too. The uh, the context and the eye contact and the delivery and the emphasis of the different points we're trying to make. You lose a little bit over Zoom, you know. And uh, but fortunate we're we're together and we're able to do that together. Hey, Ken, I, I wonder, um, you know, as Dwayne has, has stepped into this new role as the backup, how have you seen his, his preparation change and, and, and where have you seen uh, the growth? Well, when, when we're in the meetings, just uh, some of the attention to detail things, we spent a lot of time talking about how to take notes, how to highlight a play in such a way that, that things jump out to you when you review them later in the week, just study skills. And how you start that, like you would if you were, you know, you get to a university and you're, you know, how do you, how do you make the important things jump out at you? Uh, test guys at the end of the week, they got to draw, draw plays and reads and spin them back to you. So we're constantly uh, make, making our young guys jump through those hoops so that they can really digest the information, memorize it, and then they don't think about it when it happens on the field. Cam Sims has said one of the like the things about Alex as the quarterback is he gives you the answers ahead of time. I don't think there's like a, a number or a percentage of of what part of the quarterback's job that is. But in terms of getting you know everyone else on the offense ready, how does that kind of factor in with also the athletic component and things like that? Well, I'm guessing what he's referring to is, for example, you're in the huddle and, and you're given a play and it's a Z comeback and you're looking right at him, emphasis of the Z and you're staring at him. You've already had the conversation in the building. Hey, when this thing happens, we're going to have a great shot at this. Then you eyeball and you say, Z, come back. And you come out of the huddle at ready break and say, hey, give me all your depth. So you're constantly feeling good about what's about to happen in the building, the delivery in the huddle, breaking the huddle on the way to the line. There's an atmosphere of, damn, this thing's going to work. You know, so you're on your, your, your most positive mental state when that ball gets snapped and we're rolling and we've already talked about it. Those are the kind of things that a veteran does. Those are the kind of things that Alex does. And when you're processing where the routes are and who's where and fixing a formation, you don't get all those things. And that's the maturation process that we're going through. Thank you. We'll go two more, Les Carpenter and Ben. Hey, Ken, Les Carpenter at the Washington Post. Uh, you know, one thing I've been wondering about is how do you feel about Alex's uh, escapability at this point, uh, especially, you know, when you first started with him in camp? That's the part that's gotten a lot better. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fine. I really I, I like where he's at, and he's not, he hadn't hit a plateau either. So it's going to get better as we go, as we make adjustments to the brace and, and the different things that that gives you. You know, we're tinkering on the way. And, uh, you know, shit, it's not like when he's a rookie, but, you know, we're making progress every week, and he's aware of it, and he works at it. And uh, then we do the drill work to make sure that, that we're feeling good as we make moves quickly and you saw in the last Detroit game there's one in the second half he really had to get up inside of an edge rusher and I was like oh yeah okay here we go it was great you know what something else too I mean do you feel like there is a future for Dwayne I mean that things not necessarily here but just in general I mean is do you feel good about his long term I do there's very few people that can throw the ball like that he's a, he's in a select group that way uh but there's more to quarterback than that and we're working on that right now and uh it's early for him. He just got into the league. This should be his last year in college as a fifth-year senior. You know what I mean? So let's not rush to judgment on anything. Let's let him determine his own future, and we're all here to support him. Thanks. Hey, Ken. Um, speaking of young quarterbacks, obviously you've seen lots of young guys come in the league from, uh, from college. I'm just wondering, what have you seen as, like, the biggest change over time when you see guys come in the league now? the adjustment period for them when it go, comes from college to the NFL, what's the biggest uh, difference you see with, with guys coming in the league today? Well, I think the biggest adjustment I've seen is the offense adjust to who they're bringing in. Cause when you pick a guy high, he's playing. Basically most teams, they come and they pick a guy real high, he's playing. So you have to do what he does well right now. So you have to adjust as coaches. And I think you've seen over the last uh, seven, eight years, us as coaches, adapt faster to the guys we got than making them fit to what the offense is. So I, I, 
hats off to most of these coaches around the league that are really finding ways to get their young guys to play good early. And you say that these guys are going to come in and play, and that's not everybody has that philosophy, and it obviously depends on the quarterback. Just in general, what's your thought about that? Do you like the idea of if you draft the guy high, playing him right away, or would you prefer to, to, to a waiting period? Uh, it depends on what else you have on the roster, you know, and where your team's at. Are you in rebuilding? Are you right in the middle? You got to – do you have skill – like in Cincinnati, we had skill guys. John Kitna was on the roster. We played John Kitna instead of throwing Carson Palmer out there the first year. So it really depends who you have, where you're at in the program, those kinds of things. There's not one right way or wrong way.